You're listening to Get Abstract, the world's biggest collection of summaries. This is a summary of The Self-Aware Leader, a book by John C. Maxwell. What subverts young leaders, sabotages their activities, and destroys their careers? Their lack of self-awareness. Without knowing themselves, these leaders also don't know their major strengths or weaknesses. As a result, they often stumble and fail. A lack of self-awareness can also plague senior leaders, who become locked into old patterns, says leadership expert John C. Maxwell. A prolific author on how to make the most of your work and your life, he teaches leaders how to develop self-awareness for their own fulfillment and for the benefit of their teams and organizations. Here's the first takeaway. Leaders who are not self-aware find it hard to lead. Being unaware of their own strengths and weaknesses often undermines leaders. If you must ask whether you are self-aware, you probably aren't. The most knowledgeable executive coaches agree that the absence of self-awareness is a common problem for many leaders. However, you can fix this dangerous blind spot and deliberately develop your self-awareness. You can figure out who you are, catalog your personal and professional assets, and understand what type of leader you are and want to be. As you build your self-understanding by working through a process of discovery, the way you collaborate with the people you lead will almost surely improve. Okay, let's hear the second takeaway. To lead others, you must first lead yourself. Leading yourself is more of a challenge than leading others. Many of history's greatest leaders, King David, George Washington, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, sometimes found it difficult to lead themselves. Why do so many leaders, particularly young ones, inadvertently hold themselves back? Why do they often stumble? The answer is simple. Those who don't know how to lead themselves often get in their own way and trip themselves up. This clumsiness is a manifestation of their consistent failure to perceive themselves realistically. Many people judge others by what they do and what results they achieve, but unaware individuals judge themselves by their intentions. Thus, often when they do something wrong or even bad, they don't judge themselves harshly. Instead, they give themselves a pass. After all, they meant well. Often, these leaders can size up those around them with impressive acuity but cannot see themselves a serious failing. Time for takeaway number three. Leaders must be accountable, disciplined, and patient, as well as being good followers. People who operate with such a flawed mindset get in their own way. To become a more self-aware leader, use these four strategies. First, learn followership. You can't learn to lead well if you don't learn to follow well. Among other things, this means understanding the world you live in and empathizing with those around you. Exercise authority with concern for others and without arrogance. Second, develop self-discipline. While walking in Berlin, Frederick the Great of Prussia encountered an extremely old man who was also taking a walk. As he strode by, the old man made an impressive, indeed stately, appearance. He walked ramrod straight, chin up, chest out, eyes staring intently ahead. Who are you? Frederick asked the old man. I am a king, the old man said in reply. Laughing, Frederick asked the old man what he ruled. Over myself, the old man proudly stated. The old man was so fully his own master that he caught the undivided attention of a powerful monarch. Those who cultivate this kind of self-discipline grow in their ability to exercise authority over others as well. The third strategy is practice patience. Most important goals take time to achieve. Forget about instant greatness. You need time to become a quality leader by investing in yourself over the long term. As you work with your team members, pace yourself in alignment with their pace. Don't get out too far ahead and don't lag behind. And fourth, seek accountability. As a leader, never trust only in yourself alone. Like everyone else, you are a fallible human being. 
As such, you must be alert to the seductive power of leadership to corrupt your sensitivity and empathy. Stay true to yourself and hold yourself accountable to someone you respect who can gauge your actions and give you honest feedback. Author John Maxwell once discovered, to his shock, that he functioned inside an illusionary shell of blind confidence and even selfishness. He vowed to never fully trust himself and to make sure he was always accountable to someone else, someone who could call him out when he reverted to putting himself above his employees. Accountability is an essential characteristic for all leaders, but leaders aren't only accountable for their own actions. They are, of necessity, accountable for the actions of their teams. Such accountability goes hand-in-hand with willingness to accept good advice from people you respect. Mature leaders are always willing to take advice. Okay, here's another takeaway. Leadership requires selflessly guiding others. Ultimately, leadership has nothing to do with you and everything to do with enabling your team members to achieve their goals. Self-aware leaders embrace this basic truth. They're effective at leading themselves and self-aware enough to be humble and down-to-earth. They admit their weak points and work on strengthening them. They are fully aware that being a leader is a trust, not a right. We've now reached takeaway number five. Smart leaders play to their own strengths. What do you do well? Where do you excel? What strengths distinguish you? Focus your efforts there and concentrate on building up those mental, emotional, psychological, and competency assets. Most people find that recognizing their strengths helps them define their purpose. Leaders often learn their primary purpose as they discover and nail down their main strengths. Maxwell explains that connecting with others and climbing upward in his career are his two greatest strengths. He was always able to move successfully ahead in any of his fields of endeavor. But as he rose, Maxwell built communities, connected deeply to his peers and employees, and did not abandon anyone as he ascended. He emphasizes that natural leaders can gain power and build strong friendships at the same time. Maxwell recognized his skills in both these arenas and built his career on them. All right, let's continue. Here's takeaway six. People leave firms for one main reason, bad bosses. People join an organization for a wide variety of reasons. They admire the company, agree with its vision, and respect its products or services. They think the salary is fair and appreciate having opportunities for advancement. And there are a million additional reasons. In contrast, The reason 65% of employees leave their companies is that they dislike or even hate their boss. Be aware of how your employees feel about you. Do they like and respect you? To build positive relationships with your team, avoid these mistakes. First, people quit leaders who devalue them. Show people you respect and appreciate them. Second, people quit leaders who are untrustworthy. People don't trust leaders who speak one way and act another, who lie, who are closed-minded, and who look out only for themselves. Once leaders lose people's trust, they can almost never recover it. Work to be a trustworthy leader known for integrity, honesty, ethical behavior, and forthright communication. The third mistake is people quit leaders who are incompetent. Nobody wants to work for a boss who doesn't know what he or she is doing. If you are missing some essential competency, work overtime to learn it quickly. And finally, people quit leaders who are insecure. People flee from fearful, suspicious, distrustful, and jealous leaders. Instead of living in fear, work to become a confident leader who inspires those around you. Here's the next takeaway. Don't micromanage your team. Manage your own responsibilities. Many leaders give in to the temptation to micromanage, that is, to closely monitor every action their followers take and to judge every decision they make. Don't overstep your boundaries. Rather than worrying every second about what your team is doing, focus on your own responsibilities. Have faith in your team members as they, hopefully, have faith in you. 
Okay, let's now hear the eighth and final takeaway. Leaders need to acknowledge their mistakes and learn from them. Many leaders foolishly think they don't make mistakes. They assume that since they are in charge, nothing they do could be wrong. The truth is, of course, everyone makes mistakes. The mature path is to learn from your errors and from these additional leadership tips. First, choose focus over further exploration. Some leaders are dilettantes. When you are just starting your career, you would be wise to pursue different paths and even a variety of career paths to learn what suits you and what does not. But as you mature, you must pick an arena and focus on it single-mindedly. Learn where and at what you excel and invest all your strength and energy in your specific excellence. Second, choose personal growth over immediate gratification. No one in today's culture is very good at delayed gratification. Yet to lead effectively, you must focus on your long-term goals and development. If you must delay fun, nicer possessions, or an easier life to attain your goals, you will savor them all the more when the time comes because you focused first on your personal and professional growth. The third tip is put your team ahead of your career advancement. Some leaders climb to the highest corporate ranks without making meaningful connections along the way. They knock others aside to get and stay on top. That leaves them without supportive colleagues or loyal followers when their trajectory starts to fade. Fourth, handle criticism with grace. Criticism comes with leadership. Try to view it as well-intended. Take constructive criticism to heart and adapt accordingly and ignore criticism that intends to take you down. Fifth, become the best learner in the room. This will make you the best leader in the room, too. Invest in yourself by learning as much as you can. Never stop learning, and as you develop yourself practically and intellectually, make sure the people you lead also have opportunities to grow. The sixth tip is judge your leadership by the success of your team. Good leaders make things better. To judge whether you are a good or bad leader, ask how well your team members handle their work and what results they're achieving. Seventh, take the longer road that leads to higher leadership. You may be tempted to take the quick and easy path, but good things don't come easily. Take the tougher road. That's the one with the biggest payoff. Eighth, listen more than you talk. When people speak to you, pay attention. Don't get distracted or fidgety. Focus on them. And the ninth tip is credit others for your success. The great leaders of history, Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Charlemagne, William the Conqueror, Louis XV, Abraham Lincoln, and Winston Churchill could not have made their mark without the assistance of other people. This is true for all leaders. Always acknowledge the people who help you succeed. Plus, when you honor those who helped you, they are more likely to do so again. That was a summary of The Self-Aware Leader, a book by John C. Maxwell. Let's hear the eight takeaways once more. Takeaway one, leaders who are not self-aware find it hard to lead. Takeaway two, to lead others, you must first lead yourself. Takeaway three, leaders must be accountable, disciplined, and patient as well as being good followers. The fourth takeaway, leadership requires selflessly guiding others. Takeaway five, smart leaders play to their own strengths. Takeaway six, people leave firms for one main reason, bad bosses. Takeaway seven, don't micromanage your team, manage your own responsibilities. And the final takeaway, leaders need to acknowledge their mistakes and learn from them. You've been listening to a summary by Get Abstract. For more summaries on this and related topics, visit our app and website.